I am a huge fan of, of The Good Place, wrote about it in my newsletter, Five Bullet Friday, which went out to a few million people long, long, long ago. And it was a real Trojan horse for me because it was recommended to me as a funny show. And that was it. And that's how I got started. And then I was like, wait a second here. <laughs> this is a Trojan horse for all sorts of stuff that I would not expect. Emmanuel Kant didn't see that coming. So <laughs> what was the pitch? When Parks and Recreation ended, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was still on the air. But Parks and Rec ended and the people running NBC sort of said to me, like, we'd like you to do a new show and you can kind of do whatever you want. It was one of those deals and we will guarantee 13 episode season. Now, even today, the business has changed so much that that's far more commonplace today than it was at the time. At the time, that was a very exciting kind of, oh my God, like they're not going to make me do a pilot and then look at the pilot and then determine whether they're going to put it on the air and then order a small number of them and maybe cancel it after five if the ratings aren't good. Like all of the sort of pitfalls of a new show were at least temporarily removed. So when they made that offer, which was very kind of them, I had a thought which was like, man, I kind of owe it to the like myself and I kind of owe it to like the idea of being a creative force on television to try something insane. You know, like I, <laughs> I had been doing something <laughs> yeah. essentially the same at that point for a decade, which was writing stories about a group of people in a place on earth. Like the office was a group of people in an office in Scranton, Pennsylvania. The Parks and Rec was a group of people who worked at a at a government office in Indiana. And Brooklyn Nine-Nine was a group of people who were police officers and detectives in New York City. And it was like, those shows were so fun and great, but they were within the same general umbrella. And I sort of thought like, man, I, I could do it again. I could come up with a group of people who were working on the International Space Station or a group of people who work at an ice cream parlor in Belize. But it would be, it, it feels like I've been given this opportunity and I ought to take a kind of crazy swing. So they really wanted a family show. I had never done a family show. And so I, uh, being a, a good rule following soldier, I, I put a lot of thought into like, what would it look like for me to do a family show? And the truth is, there's not that much that's very interesting about my family. <laughs> like I'm from, I'm like a, <laughs> I'm a sort of middle class white guy who grew up in like a suburb of Hartford, Connecticut. And there is, uh, there's a lot that's been said about people like me on television and my family on television. And so I kind of like, I had this idea, I had the nascent idea for The Good Place rattling around in my head and had for a couple of years, like it's in little tiny pieces this idea had been kind of like bugging me. And so I thought about that and I started to get excited and I developed it on my own time. And it just became very obvious that like that was the interesting idea. And of the many, many rules of creation or of writing that have been taught to me over the years by a number of very smart people, the, the best and most trustworthy is write what's interesting. Like, don't try to, don't fake it. Like, if you have to fake it, if you have to try to tell people that your idea is interesting, then, then you're dead, right? So like this, it just seemed like the best idea I had and the most interesting. And then that presented a number of challenges. Like, for example, how do you sell a TV network on the idea of doing a show that's explicitly about moral philosophy? Like, that's a tough sell. And so... <laughs> Question number I, I, one, what is moral philosophy, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And how do you, and how does it work on Tuesday at 8.30 on NBC, right? So I did a couple things to try to make it palatable to my bosses. One of them was I worked way harder and for way longer developing the idea than I think I would have normally if I were writing a show about six goofballs in an office somewhere in Pennsylvania. Although, pause for a second to say that Greg worked for an entire year on developing The Office before he ever met with me or any of the other writers. Like, he put an enormous amount of work into that show. But 
my point is that I worked harder on figuring out what the story was for the entire season because they'd given me an entire season to work with than I think that I would have normally. I, I had the entire season mapped out before I pitched it. The second thing I did is I talked to Ted Danson and Kristen Bell, who I wanted to play the main parts, and they had expressed interest in playing those parts. So when I went in to pitch the show, I said, here's the show, and I laid it out for them. I told them what the pilot would be. I told them what the themes would be. I told them what, how, what the general arc of the entire first season would be. I was, and I said to them, I've been working on this for a long time. If you have a lot of questions, I promise I'll have answers for you. Like, There's no aspect of this that I haven't thought about. I also told them that Ted Danson and Kristen Bell were at least in theory interested in being in the show, which helped a great deal because once you have Ted Danson and Kristen Bell in your show... They don't care what it's about. Like, it can be about anything. Like, those are two big <laughs> stars, right? And the last thing I did, and I think the most important thing I did, was I said, listen, this is a show about what it means to be a good person. And the engine for this, the mechanism, is the study of moral philosophy. And that's not going to be, like, shoved into the margins. It's not going to be, like, a casual reference here and there. It's going to be the the guts of the show. It's going to be in every episode of the show. One of the characters is a moral philosophy professor who is going to be like teaching people stuff. And, and I know that that might seem like a risky idea, but I promise you it will not feel like homework. It's going to be funny and it's going to be uh, entertaining. And I think that moral philosophy has, uh, in a way that no one maybe would think, at first glance is actually a very funny discipline to me. It's like the thought experiments are really funny and the people who invented these theories are really weird and funny. So I said, I promise it won't feel like homework. Now, that being said, the third episode literally begins with the character Chidi standing at a blackboard with Philosophy 101 written on it. And I was like, oh boy, like <laughs> maybe I spoke too soon. But that was how I not only convinced them to let me do it, but also tried to reassure them that I wasn't going to bore people to tears. That it was like, I, I know this is a show about moral philosophy, but I also fundamentally understand that it's a half hour sitcom on a major network that needs to have jokes and funny stories and plots that are entertaining. And I kind of just asked them to trust me and and they did. And it was really cool of them that they let me kind of take this wild idea and run with it. 